In November of 2025, Google has rolled out Gemini 3 Pro for its Google Workspace customers, and it has some really fascinating AI capabilities, which it embedded into Google Sheets in a very impressive way. So it has significantly improved the reasoning or deep thinking for complex analysis and also for handling of other types of complex tasks. As always, I will show you what it does super well, as well as some of the shortcomings that it unfortunately still has. So without further ado, let's dive in. So when you get to sheets.google.com or you click on the nine dots here, when you're logged into Gmail, you'll be able to go ahead and access sheets. You can also do that by typing in sheets.new and it will bring you to this screen here. And right away, we see some help from Google Gemini on the right hand side. And then I wanna show you that over here on the right hand side on the main menu, we could see that we have a Gemini portion here where we can analyze data, generate charts, charts, pivot tables, images, formulas, or ask for something else. And also, if you don't see this here, some sample templates of things it can create, what we can do is we can click on this Ask Gemini logo on the top right hand side. And if we select that, it will pop open the Gemini window. So now I'll ask for something like create a project tracker for a website launch, include columns for task, owner, due date, status with dropdown and priority. Add five example tasks. I'll go ahead and I will submit this. Now I'll go ahead and insert it and you'll see that this table now exists within our Google Sheets and it is giving me further prompts that I might wanna request, like add a new column, estimated hours to the project tracker to track effort for each task. Highlight the rows where the status is pending to quickly see tasks needing attention, yada, yada. This is so incredibly helpful. Now, this is really impressive because not only did it create it in a very visually friendly way, it didn't just throw text in cells, it created the header, it made things bold and the text stand out. It even added a little calendar icon here. And this is helpful because users don't even need to know how to use data validation menus anymore. They just need to describe the outcome that they want. Now, one problem I see is for for status, I asked for it to be able to include the actual dropdown for status and it didn't. So here, rather than go and X out of this, delete it and start over, I can go ahead and further prompt it and say, I asked for dropdown options in column D for status progress. Can you please do that? I will send it through and look, it adjusted it right away. Now we have these chips here where we can select in progress, complete, pending. This is so incredibly helpful. It is so dynamic and it understands exactly what I am looking for. And if it doesn't, I can go ahead and further prompt it. And now I wish to ask for a slightly different task. I want to see how good it is at actually problem solving. How good is its deep thinking? Can it really think ahead to solve a problem with conflicting rules rather than just guessing? So here's what I'm going to ask for. It might be a little complex, but follow along because let's see how it does. I'm doing this in real time with the rest of you. So here I said I need to generate a schedule where I create a table from Monday through Friday. I have four employees, Angie, Pam, Alyssa, and Gio. Angie cannot work on Mondays. Pam and Alyssa cannot work on the same day. Gio must work exactly three days. Every day must have exactly two people working. I'll send it through and let's see how good it does. So very, very quickly, it went ahead and created this table for us and let's see if it adheres to the rules. Angie cannot work on Mondays. She's not working on Monday. Pam and Alyssa cannot work on the same day. This is correct, they're not working on the same day. Geo must work three days. We see Geo appear three times and every day must have exactly two employees working. It went ahead and did that perfectly. I will select insert and then I could go and hand this into my boss and then hang out at the park for the rest of the day and do whatever the heck I want with my valuable time. And this is super impressive because the old models used to hallucinate like crazy when creating a table like this because they're predictive models. They were predicting the next word rather than solving the logic puzzle first. So for those that follow the channel, you know that I do a lot of presentations on AI. So what I had decided 
decided to do is upload, but tweak a little bit, a slightly different version of an actual spreadsheet that I use to track my successful presentations, where I list the date, where I presented, the type of program it was, the compensation, and some details on the actual program, some notes over here. And you see how right away it's saying analyze this data, but before we even do that, I'm gonna pop open the Gemini window. Now, what I'm gonna do is I don't wanna actually show how much I got paid, so I wanna just put random numbers here between $500 and $1,000 as far as compensation. Now, obviously I could achieve that, by typing in something like equals rand between, and then I choose two different integers. So let's say 500 and 1000. I will close the parentheses, I'll press enter, I'll suggest autofill, and it goes ahead and does that, right? That was actually a couple of steps. Now, what I wanna show here, and this will be pretty impressive, is I could just specify, in column D, please add random dollar values between $500 and $1,000. I also noticed that I have cybersecurity, and in some other areas I have CS, which is also cybersecurity, and this might get weird when we start playing around with charts, which I'll cover shortly. So what I wanna do here is I wanna normalize it. So I will give it a couple of different rules. I'll also say, in column C, can you normalize anything that says cybersecurity to simply CS? And the last thing I notice is that I have this blue line over here for the range and it goes ahead and it only goes to the 83rd row. And if you didn't know, like let's say I try to order something uh, alphabetically. So let's say the place alphabetically, you'll notice that it only does it around my range, but then afterwards it doesn't do this alphabetically. So I wanna make sure that it's for the entire range over here. So what I'll do, I'll say the current range only includes up to row 83. Can you have it include all of the filled in cells, row 194 currently? Then I'll go ahead and I'll send it through and let's see how it does. And take a look at this in just a second. It says, I've completed all your requests on the presentation sheet. I replaced all instances of cybersecurity with CS. Let's see if that's accurate. It actually did go ahead and do that and it did a really good job. It also didn't touch cybersecurity in the E column. It only did that for column C like I requested. It filled in the compensation column with a formula to generate a random dollar value between $500 and a thousand, it did that absolutely correctly. And it says that the operations cover the full range of data up to row 194. And we could see that everything is selected now with that blue outline, which is absolutely perfect. Saves me a lot of time. And now here it gives me some suggestions. And here it says, create a pivot table showing the total compensation for each type, 3D, AI, and cybersecurity presentations. And I actually would like to do that. So I'm just gonna select that. And now it's already working on that. And let's see how good of a job it does. So take a look at how helpful this is. Although I'm a bit confused for why there are two rows of AI. So I'm actually going to ask that question because I see 3D printing AI, AI, CS. I will say, why are there two rows of AI? And here it tells me that the reason there's two rows of AI is due to an inconsistency in the data used to create the pivot table. One row is for AI and the other row is for AI space, which has a trailing space and a total compensation of $1,063. So now I'm gonna say normalize AI and AI space in column C and then create a pivot table showing total compensation for each type of program. Make it a dynamic table so that if I change compensation, it will automatically adjust. I'll send it through. So take a look at this. Now we have 3D printing, AI, and cybersecurity, and here is the sum of compensation, and it adds up to $143,970. Let's go ahead and confirm that by selecting column D, and you see that the sum indeed is $143,970. And now let's double check that this is indeed a dynamic table. So if I add a lot of zeros to this 3D printing presentation, and then if I go to check the pivot table, you'll see that it automatically adjusted for that. How awesome is that? And if you don't like that after every answer through Gemini, when it goes ahead and generates a response that it gives you these suggestions, you can always ask for 
fewer suggestions and then it won't do that. Now, something else I wish to show is the chart aspect. So if I say create a pie chart depicting total revenue per year and send it through. So you can see here that it provided us with this beautiful chart of total revenue per year. And you might be asking yourself, yes, but it says the percentage and not the total dollar amount. But if I hover over any slice of the pie, you will see that it actually showcases the exact amount and not just the percentage. Something else I want to point out is if you want to take a look at the actual analysis steps, it will explain to you step by step what it actually performed. And this is really helpful because you can problem solve if you feel like something went awry. Now, if I really like this pie chart, I simply select insert and you will see that it went ahead and inserted this into my actual spreadsheet and also provided this really, really helpful table right here. So let's now test how good Gemini 3 is at visual tasks. So what I will ask from Gemini is to switch the colors. So you see how 2024 is red and 2023 is blue. I will ask for it to recreate the chart, but make 2024 blue and 2023 red. And so I'll send this request through. So here we see that the figures and numbers are the same. However, it created a donut chart versus a pie chart. This is not what I asked for. And furthermore, it states here that 2024 slice is now blue and 2023 slice is now red. But as we take a look, 2023 is not red, it's still blue, and 2024 is still red. So it absolutely failed this task. Now just for giggles, let me point it out and see if it course corrects. So here I say you're wrong, 2023 is not red and 2024 is not blue. Please fix it and make it a pie chart, not a donut chart. I will send it through. And here we see another shortcoming. So it did turn it back into a pie chart, not a donut chart. But again, it's stating that the 2023 slice is red and the 2024 slice is blue. But over here, we see that that's incorrect. The 2023 slice is blue, not red. And the 2024 slice is red, not blue, as it states right here. This is a huge error, and I hope that someone at Google sees this and fixes it. I want to do one last example here of showing you how to clean up really messy data that's inconsistent. So as you can see here, column A is filled with phone numbers that have 10 digits in it, but I want to format it all the same way. I will say, can you standardize column A in this format? And I want the area code in parentheses followed by a space, then three numbers, then a dash, and then four numbers. I will send it through. And here you see that it did terrible in this task where it said it created a new column titled standardized phone number. It cleaned the data and it applied the custom number format right here, but it actually didn't do that. It did a terrible job. It stripped all the parentheses. This is very uneven. This doesn't even have 10 digits anymore. It looks like it only has nine digits. It did use a regex replace formula, but still this is very, very sloppy. Really disappointed by this response. I'm gonna try one last example. So what I did is put in some sloppy addresses here, and then I will ask Gemini. I need to standardize column A. Please split these addresses into three distinct columns, street address, unit floor, and city state. Note that the delimiters are inconsistent commas, dashes, brackets, create a formula that handles all these variations safely. I'll send it through and let's see what happens here. And here it's giving me some formulas for street address. Then it said that it went ahead and used the formula for unit floor and some other ones. And it said applying this formula caused an error. And so basically it just shows that it's not yet ready to handle the really advanced tasks. I went ahead and put this ask into ChatGPT just to see what it would go ahead and create. And it seemed to do a better job in this example at outputting it, but I'm definitely curious on your thoughts. And again, I wanted to do this to showcase that there are still some shortcomings when it comes to Gemini 3 in Google Sheets. Let me know what you think of this tutorial in the comment section, and hopefully I'll see some of you in the next video.